All right, hi everybody. I hope you're having a great day. Today we're gonna to talk about some lab safety. So this, these slides are up on Google Classroom for you to go through and follow through as we're talking about them today. Um, and then throughout the next couple of days, every time we'll be going over notes, they will be on here. There is an online version of your notes packet that is, or notes worksheet that is on Google Classroom as well. There will be physical copies that should have been handed out today in class for you to fill out as we go along. They should follow the slides pretty closely. So today we're gonna to talk about basic safety, uh, lab safety and equipment. Today's gonna to be focused on more of the safety side of things. Tomorrow we'll go more into lab equipment and how to use the equipment and things like that. So first things first is your lab safety contract. So you have probably seen one of these before if you were at SCUT last year for biology, everybody has to sign one of these no matter what science class you are in. This is just basically giving you the general rules and guidelines on how to behave in lab. So whether it's dealing with accidents and injuries, any type of clothing you're wearing, how to handle chemicals, all of it will be listed in here. So please read through this. Major part is uh, demerits will be issued to, for failure to follow, con uh, follow this contract. Uh, I have some other things about heating substances, handling glassware, all those fun things. So at the very bottom, you need to answer these three questions. Do you wear contact lenses? Are you colorblind, yes or no? And do you have allergies? And if you do, please list them below. And then you will have to sign it and date it. And also uh, have a parent or guardian sign and date down here. This is just so that if something happens in lab and you are acting around or acting out, not doing what you're supposed to be doing, I can bring up, hey, you signed your lab safety contract, you know how you are supposed to behave and hand out demerits accordingly. This will be due Thursday. When you walk in, I will remind your parents on mini school night. Um, this is on Google Classroom. So I am not having physical copies. All of it is online. Just sign it real quick and submit it. Uh, if you'd like to do it on paper, you're more than welcome. You'll have to print it yourself, but that is always an option. Okay, first things first. Uh, teachers should always be present when entering the lab. So anytime we do some sort of lab, I or another adult need to be here. I generally try not to do labs of any sort when I'm not here. So if I'm not physically in this classroom, you do not start the lab until there is somebody else here. Leave all of your belongings outside of the lab area. That means phones, textbooks, iPads, unless stated otherwise. Everything and anything stays at your desk. Your phone should stay at your desk in the baskets anyway. And that's for protection, so that things aren't getting spilled on them, chemicals aren't all over them, basically trying to keep them from being destroyed. So if unless stated otherwise, everything stays at your lab station, all you'll really need is the worksheet and a pencil, and then you'll be good to go. Okay general rules for lab safety. So since we'll be spending some time during, uh, doing labs together, it's important to know how to act appropriately. General guidelines, read through all the way before doing anything. So if you've ever been at home cooking a recipe and then you get about halfway through and you read to say preheat your oven to 350 degrees so you can throw in whatever you're making, but you don't say that till it's too late and you could have had it preheated beforehand, that's why we reread and read through it completely before the lab. Generally, if it's a lab I know we can't get done or it'll be a stretch to get done during the class period, I will give you the lab report the night before so that you can read through it, understand it, and ask any questions you have. So that when we get to the lab, we can just go ahead and get started and you already know what to do. And it's less of a, let me read it now so we don't waste time. We have shortened class periods anyway, only 45 minutes. Sometimes it can be tough to get those labs done in that short amount of time. Also keep lab table or desk neat and organized to avoid spilling or breaking anything while working. So we all know if you have a glass at home, not to leave it on the edge of a counter so you don't knock it off. Put it into the middle where it's not going to fall. Those kind of things. Make sure you are aware where flames are, heat pads, anything like that. Hot glassware will have be able to keep things from breaking and spilling when they're not supposed to. 
So in case of an emergency, always tell the teacher before doing anything else, no matter how minor I want to know. So even if it is the simplest little cut on your finger during a chemical lab, I need to know, mainly because we are dealing with chemicals. If some chemicals get into your body, it could do some serious harm. So I need to know so I know how to take care of it. Also, same thing with if you spill something. Some things you can't just use water to clean it up. If it's an acid, we have to use a base to be able to clean it up. Or if it's a base, you have to use an acid to clean it up. I need to know that. So if something happens, glass breaks, you spill a large quantity of something, or you know whatever it may be, I need to know. There's no, oh, we'll just clean it up real quick and Miss Wilms won't know. I'll be more mad to find out later that something spilled or something happened and I didn't know about it than if you just told me right away and we could take care of it. So just tell me anything and everything. Take lab seriously, never goof around. You will lose points or get a zero on the lab. If you are messing around in the lab, I will just have you sit out and you will be done and you won't be allowed to do another lab in the, the rest of the year. It is not a time to put other people at risk for you to make labs, okay? So do what you're supposed to be doing. Get in, get out, do the lab. When in doubt, ask the teacher. So if you're ever getting to a point in the lab and you're like, I don't understand what this is saying to do, or I don't understand what it's saying, just come ask, okay? Raise your hand, I'll come to you and I will give you a hand so that you don't have to sit there and struggle and make a mistake that could dramatically change things. Some things aren't meant to be mixed together in certain quantities and if they are, we have issues. So just come ask, say, hey, am I doing this right? And I will help you out when we get to those situations. Okay. So we have some safety equipment we need to talk about. So the first one is goggles. So safety goggles are always worn when using chemicals or fire to protect your eyes. These stay on even through cleanup. So these are our safety goggles. They look like this. These are anti-splash, meaning when they go on your face, they kind of create a seal all the way around. These ones can be adjusted by the sides here so that you can loop them, adjust them to make your fit around your head. Also make sure they fit snug, but they don't need to be so tight they're leaving marks around your face. So these are really good. Um, they keep your eyes dry. If something were to explode in your face, it would protect one, your eyebrows would be covered and two, your eyes are covered as well so that you don't get chemical in there and then we don't have to worry about having to wash out your eyes. These are worn all the way through. It doesn't matter if it's something as simple as water, you are wearing these goggles and I will be on top of you the entire time. If I have to tell you more than once to put your goggles on and to keep them on, I'm gonna hand out demerits. So wear your goggles, it's for your safety. The next one is a lab apron or coat. So these are to warm to be protecting your clothing. They look like these. They're just standard old coats. We have them in several different sizes for everybody. You'll notice with these, they're generally pretty short in the arms just because obviously we're using chemicals and fire. We don't want anything that's too baggy. They're there to protect your clothing so that you can make sure you don't have to stain your clothes. Um, generally, we don't have to worry about these too often. We will every once in a while. And when we do, I will have coats out for people that really want them. But again, that is totally up to you. Most of the stuff we use, we will not have to worry about these too often. And then we get to heat resistant gloves. So these are using for hot objects to avoid burning yourself. Our gloves look like this. Every lab station has at least a pair of these. These are great for using beakers, Bunsen burners. If you need to grab something that's hot, you just put them on and pull it out. Uh, they shouldn't burn you. You won't really feel any heat coming through them. So these are great. If you ever get to a lab station and these aren't in there for whatever reason, or if you can't find your goggles, come talk to me and I will make sure you get the needed supplies. Okay, fire. So we will be doing things with fire this year. So we need to be able to take care of it. So to prevent fires, never walk away from an open flame or a plugged in hot plate. Flame should never be unattended, unattended at any point. 
if for whatever reason you need to go do something, make sure your lab partner is there to watch the flame. I should not see an empty lab table with a flame going on. Uh, keep your hair tied back from working in the lab. So hair needs to be back into a ponytail for ladies with long hair. Uh, anything about shoulders width length, you are good to go. I will not have hair ties, unfortunately, so you will need to bring your own. Uh, day before lab days and on lab days, I will remind you to put your hair up. If you do not have a ponytail holder or you can't borrow one from somebody, I have rubber bands. We all know nobody wants to put a rubber band in their hair, but we need to have, be safe. So buy some, keep them in your locker, borrow from our friend, do what you need to do, but hair needs to go back. Uh, do not wear loose fitting clothing or jewelry in a lab. So for example, I have my lanyard here. I would have to take this off during a lab with a Bunsen burner just because this could dangles and could catch fire very easily. So this would have to come off. Sweatshirts, if they have really long sleeves on them, that would have to come off or at least be rolled up to the point where it won't be in your way. And then never reach across the flame and open flame. So what that means is you don't reach across the flame, you reach around it so that you're not getting burnt. Um, a fire extinguisher can be used to put out fires. So fire extinguishers are to be used on objects or thing, objects that are on fire, whether that's on a lab station, whether that is a piece of paper, if you can't just simply put it into the sink, if it's a textbook, someone who brought their textbook and it caught on fire, we would use our handy dandy fire extinguisher. This is found by the door um, as you walk into my classroom. This one is pretty much like the standard fire extinguisher uh, that everybody has. Every science room has one of these in their room. So with a fire extinguisher, there's kind of an acronym you use to be able to use a fire extinguisher. It is PASS. So it is pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. So what it means by that is on the fire extinguisher, there is this pin right here. So to be able to work a fire extinguisher, right now it wouldn't work because the pin is in. So to be able to make the fire extinguisher work, you have to pull the pin, which is P. Then you will take the nozzle off, aim it at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep. So that's where we get past. Pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Now these are to not be used on people because of the chemicals that are inside of it are very toxic and are not meant to be inhaled at any point. And it is a high or it is very high pressurized um, in these containers, so it can be really dangerous if someone gets hit with one of these. So this is for things like if the lab station was on fire, we would, if it was something that we couldn't control by just throwing it in the sink and taking care of it, I would say, hey. One, go pull the fire alarm, which is in the back of my room by the fire exit, and grab the fire extinguisher. You would then pull the pin, aim, squeeze, and sweep at the base of the fire. And hopefully that would take care of it and we wouldn't have to worry about it from there. If it is a person that is on fire, we do not use the fire extinguisher. What we use instead is called a fire blanket. So I'm gonna turn you this way. So on this side of the room, and every single science classroom has one of these, we have our fire blanket. The fire blanket sits inside of there. We've never had to use it. And all you do is you pull the handle down, and it will release the blanket. You pull it down, and your blanket is sitting right inside of here. You would take it out, wrap it around the person, and you would basically try and pat out the fire. So the fire blanket is to only be used on a person. You would just wrap them up, pat out the fire, and then you should be good to go. You could also tell the person initially to, like we all know from kindergarten, stop, drop, and roll. So they can stop, drop, roll, and then you throw the fire blanket on top of them and it smothers the fire out. Again, fire needs oxygen. If there is no oxygen present, the fire will be put out. 
So that is the goal with a fire blanket and a fire extinguisher is to just smother the fire as much as humanly possible. Now in our classroom, if we got to the point where we needed to evacuate because of a fire, we have two exits. We have the fire door exit, which is in the back of the classroom, which leads us straight to outside. And then we have the main door. Depending on the situation, it's going to dictate which door we use. On a normal everyday fire drill, we're not dealing with fire in class, but the fire alarms go off, we're using the main door that we go in and out of every day. If it is something in the classroom where we have a fire right outside of our hallway or at lab station number one, then we're gonna have to go and use the back fire exit to be able to get out safely. And I also have a window in the back, so if we really get into a bind, we can go out that window as well. Okay, uh, chemicals. So no eating or drinking in lab, unless I state otherwise. Most of our labs, we will have some where we will actually eat, depending on what we're making. Most of the time, there are no eating and drinking in labs. So this looks like a normal glass of water, but you never know, one, what chemical this is, and two, glassware uh, is not always clean. Uh, high sophomores in high school, juniors in high school are not always great at cleaning glassware. So because of that, you do not drink out of any sort of container or beaker that is out for you. Uh, there's also no tasting chemicals. Again, you're not supposed to ingest these chemicals and so that can be really bad for you. Uh, when you're smelling something, so if you need to smell something, we're gonna do a technique called wafting. So to waft, you take whatever chemical it is away from your face and you push the air into your face and up and you'll be able to smell whatever you're dealing with. We do that just so that you're not sticking your nose in it. There are times when you stick your nose into something and you take a big sniff, it can make you pass out. So for that, we are just going to put it away from our face, waft the smell into our face, and then we are good to go. Uh, wearing gloves when handling toxic chemicals. Uh, in general, regular chemistry, we don't use anything that's too toxic that we have to wear uh, gloves for. Always dispose of chemicals correctly. Ask before pouring down the drain. That's because some chemicals are very corrosive and will eat away at metal in the drain. So if I don't tell you it can go down the sink, do not put it down the sink. Generally, we will put it in the fume hood, which is right next to where my computer goes, and we will keep it safe there, and then I will take care of it at a later date. Uh, tell me if there are any spills. If you spill something, especially if it is an acid, a base, it really doesn't matter granulars of chemicals, please talk to me and tell me so I can help you clean it up. Because So depending on what chemical it is, it's going to dictate how we clean it up. If you get a chemical on yourself or in your eyes, we have to use the eye wash station and the safety shower, which is found in the back of the classroom. You guys have probably all seen it and have wanted to pull the shower, as most people do. So how this works, over here in this back corner, we have our eye wash station and our lab safety shower. The eye wash station is to be used obviously for your eyes. So what happens if you have to use the eye wash station? You will say, Miss Wilms, I wasn't wearing my goggles. I got something in my eye and my eyes are burning. You will, I will guide you or a friend will guide you because more than likely you will not be able to see. Uh, someone will guide you over and I will ask you, are you wearing contact lenses? Because if you are wearing contact lenses, we have to get them out. The reason for that is because the chemical gets stuck behind your contact lenses and just sit there and basically bore until you're into your eyes. So we will take your contact lenses out. If you have contact lenses in, we will come over. I will take the lens caps off and push down on this handle and water will start flowing or we can push the handle as well. Water will start coming out. I will tell you, you need to pull your eyes open and look down over the water. And it's gushing large amounts of water into your eyes so that you are able to flush it. I will then have somebody run and say, hey, go to the office or tell Mr. Camp to call the office and we will call 911 and we will take you to the hospital after that. So it is nothing to joke about of getting stuff in your eyes. The safety shower is to be used for emergencies only. Um, a lot of people think it's funny 
come over and try and pull the safety shower. I will hand out massive demerits because this makes an absolute mess when the safety shower is pulled. So if you spilled large quantities of chemicals on yourself, mainly that'd be things like acids, you will come over, someone will guide you over because more than likely you'll be in serious pain. You will walk over and we will pull the triangle down and water will come gushing all over you. We will also probably try and have you take off at least the top layer of clothing if you spilled it on your clothing so that it's not sitting there just soaking into your skin. So we will have you try and rinse off all the chemical off your body. We will call 911 and they will take you to the hospital and take care of any issues that you may have. So the eye wash station and the safety shower are no joke. They are not to be played with, messed with of any sort. They are there for safety reasons. We have never had to use them in this class. I'm hoping we can continue that record and we can move on from there. Okay, uh, glassware. Glassware can look hot and, or hot glass looks the same as cold glass. When you have a piece of glassware like this, you have no idea what the temperature is. It's not like metal when it's gonna turn red because it's hot. Always assume it's hot. So what you're gonna do if this was sitting on a table, you would just put your hand to the side of it and that'll allow you to feel the heat coming off of it. If there is no heat, you should be able to get closer and closer to be able to touch it and then you're good to pick it up with your hands. If you feel the heat coming off of it from here, then you're gonna to wanna to grab something like your gloves to be able to pick up whatever you're dealing with. Or you can use tongs as well. Uh, broken glassware goes in a special trash can that does not just go in a normal trash can especially because that we have students picking up our trash in the afternoons so i will have a box that is meant for glassware only and it'll say that and you'll throw any broken glassware in there and please do not pick it up tell me and i will come pick it up i don't want you getting cut and bleeding because of broken glassware you don't know how clean it is so i will take care of it um, also, check your glassware before you use it. So if you see the slightest crack in it, you let me know. And I will get you a different beaker or flask or whatever we're dealing with. Because if you use it and you heat it up, it's going to break. Like There's no doubt about it. So you will want to just check it. Always check your glassware before you use it. And then you're good to go. Uh, closed toed shoes and long pants are the safest attire for working in the lab. There will be a few labs I will require you to wear closed toed shoes. So tennis shoes are fine, uh, so, like Crocs are a no go, uh, flip flops, Birkenstocks, even with socks, I need closed toed shoes. A lot of the labs we do, it's fine, but there are a few here and there you will need to wear closed toed shoes. Pants, we don't use anything overly dangerous like that, that you will have to wear pants. Uh, but it's always a safe idea. It it's an extra layer to protect your skin. Okay, so lab safety contracts are due on Thursday. Please, 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 please get those done. If you do not have your lab safety contract turned in before our first lab, I can't let you do lab. So please, please, please get your lab signed and in and turned into onto Google Classroom or if you print it off into me and then Make sure you're getting caught up in any work, whether that is your one word that needs to be turned in or your crossword puzzle from Friday. So let me know if you have any questions and have a great rest of your day.